Hi, I'm Carol Stevenson, Community Engagement Manager for the Children's Center of the Antelope Valley, and I have the pleasure of being here today with Anthony Bailey from Run for Grace, who is raising funds for us for the second year in a row. We are so grateful for their support. So I wanted to hear a little bit today about Anthony's why, the backstory to what drew him to the Children's Center. So Anthony, to tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, well, I grew up in a very dysfunctional household. Um, I guess dysfunctional is kind of, kind of putting it mildly. Uh, I was born here in the Antelope Valley, AV hospital to be exact, and both my parents were heroin addicts, alcoholics. Uh, they both had mental abuse or mental illness from there, especially from my mom's childhood. She was abused and all kinds of bad stuff happened to her, so that kind of just carried on into her adulthood. They separated at three months old. She married another man. He had his own issues, and um, he's very abusive. Pretty much, uh, just a pretty much a monster, just a, a bad person. So when his drug addiction got bad, it, it really escalated the violence in the house. My mother went through horrible depression, so she wasn't there to kind of defend us. And um, just a whole, I could go on forever about this stuff, but that carried me into adulthood. And I became an alcoholic myself for 14 years, and luckily I was able to get out of that darkness and um, become a more productive person, a happier person, and not let my past be, not have that woe is me attitude all the time. So to answer your question of why Children's Center this is so, uh, it's touched me is because you guys help children that went through trauma to not have the same effects I had, basically. And so that seemed like to be a perfect fit. So it sounds like with your past, you experienced that generational trauma where somebody's childhood trauma then translates into adult trauma, which ends up back on new children. Mm -hmm. And so you've broken that cycle, right? I'm trying to. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're now a, a dad, stepdad mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. and helping raise these amazing young people that they, they, you know that they need that loving role model. Yeah. And you're able to be that for them. I'm struggling. It's a struggle for me because I never was taught how to be a parent. I was, I, I and unfortunately my, my children have things I never had growing up. And um, a lot of the issues from my childhood still come up with raising them. Um, so I, I, I'm still going through therapy today for what I went through as a child which is wild. I'm 45 years old, I'm still struggling with my past. It's not a day that goes by that I don't think about things that happen. So that's sort of a testament to the power of a traumatic experience as a child mm -hmm. that decades later, it keeps raising its, its ugly head, right? Mm -hmm. That just comes out of nowhere and you find that you're dealing with it all over again. Mm -hmm. Of course, here at the Children's Center, that's what we're trying to help these children with is to overcome those traumatic events and process them and not have it continue to be a cycle throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. I think that is speaks to the value of therapy. Yeah, I didn't know that it was, I, I figured, uh, I don't know, it's 30, 40 years ago this stuff happened. Why? I'm not going to worry about that. So until I got therapy, I didn't realize that these things so affected me. Mm -hmm. The tiniest things, like um, the feelings I have towards my children, or or my self-esteem still, or the imposter syndrome, or the I don't deserve to have this or that, or so like me sitting here today, there's still a thought in my head like, why would Carol want to talk to me? Well, that's, that can be a pretty powerful voice. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've always appreciated about you and Jen is that you Instead of uh, sitting back and letting life happen, you've embraced it and you are turning your lemons into lemonade for others. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that you see in the children that we serve the child that was Anthony. Mm -hmm. and, and you see what we're trying to do for these children. Uh, and I so appreciate that you are this positive force and doing amazing things for yourself, for the community, and for the children that we serve. Oh, thank you. It's, I, it's my pleasure. I never I envisioned myself for being in this position. I, I, like I said, I was a four, an alcoholic for 14 years. 
I would wake up with hangovers. I would uh, tell myself all day I need to stop drinking. Because my parents were alcoholics, and I told myself I'd never be an alcoholic. At the end of the 14 years, I was sitting there thinking, why? I've done anything in 14 years. Spending 14 years sitting on my balcony smoking cigarettes or drinking or going to some dark, dainty bar or going to a club, and I didn't make a single impact in the world. And so now I, I'm almost like in competition with that older Anthony. I want to make as much impact as possible with the remaining years I have to make up for those 14 years of what I call mediocrity. Uh, but it's just me, it's just those 14 years of just the after effects of what I went through as a child. Right. Yeah. If I could help someone, any child, or any see something that we're doing and, and say, oh my gosh, he is where he is now and he suffered um, what I'm going through now, that means I could do, do that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about how the 4x4x48 works okay. and how the community can support you. Well, it, there's a, a big role model that I'm, I know, his name is David Goggins. He started the challenge called the 4x4x48 where you just run maybe four miles for four hours, run four miles every four hours for 48 hours, which equals 48 miles altogether. And uh, he does it once a year, and I think he does it like in, in March, but um, I, I wanted to, I did it last year, I took it on for the first time, and it's hard. <laughs> uh, you think, I mean, because I've done a few marathons now, you would think four miles, oh, and that's no big deal, but if you, your body needs to recover, and it, it, you don't get the time to recover, so after like the fourth or fifth leg, your body is pretty tight and sore, and you gotta, you, you're trying to get sleep in between that. Uh, so what we do is, instead of this, a lot of people just start from the house. They do four miles, go around, go to sleep, go around. I thought, how can I get more impact out of this through the community by helping you guys? And that's involving the Antelope Valley, the businesses. So what we do would be ask businesses to sponsor us. It's a minimum of $48. And I will, and you pick a time slot, one of the 11 legs. Um, there's 12 legs, but the last one is with you guys. So there's 11 possible ones, and they choose, and I'll go to the location. I will do a little uh, Facebook Live from there. I'll promote them, do the four miles, and then go for, come back, maybe talk a little bit more about it, and then go to the next one. But uh, last year we had 11, 11 businesses. No, we had less than 11 because some people did twice. They took two legs. You can take multiple legs if you want. It's fine. But it's so help. I mean, I could not believe the support we got last year from this. And so I'm like, well, why are we stopping? Let's keep going with it. Right. So we're doing the same thing. Um, and now it's the middle of summer instead of in the winter time. <laughs> so that's going to be an added challenge. Uh -huh. And this year I would like more people to join me. I would love, you don't have to fundraise, but if you just want to join me on some of the legs as moral support to help spread the word, if you want to help me fundraise, that's amazing too. Just grab the link and share it with your friends. So what organizations have signed on so far? As of today, our first leg is already taken. 8 p.m. on Friday is taken by uh, the Great Wall of Lancaster, the restaurant. Delicious food. Mm -hmm. um, they were supported last year and they, did, they took the same exact spot. So okay. um, as of now, that's all the other ones are available, okay. but they go quick. Yeah. And um, I haven't been pushing it as much as I, because I'm trying to get last year's to come on first to give them kind of uh, the head start. I'm First thinking, dibs. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'll wait a few more days and as it gets closer I'll be a bit more aggressive about asking people but now it, it, it almost sells itself. I don't have to do much work. You guys are an amazing organization. Who wouldn't want to help you guys? Well thank you. I appreciate that. And I assume that you will be keeping the community abreast of your progress on your social media. You'll, you'll be uh, sharing a route so that those who do want to join you will know where you're going to be stopping or starting, mm -hmm. and and they can meet up with you there. Yeah, we have the I have the entire uh, flyer made out, and every time I get up, I update the business that goes in the slot. And once we get it all in, I'll post it on the social media. I'll, I'll give updates on which where we started from where. I'll make routes for every single location. So if you see a business and you think, okay, I live next to this one, I think I would like to join that one on that. Or uh, yeah, I'll be very open about it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. all right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll share that as well mm -hmm. as you share with us so people can go on Run for Grace, uh, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook too? Instagram, Facebook, our website, YouTube, we're all over the place. Okay, uh, yeah. or uh, Children's Center AV, yeah. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. So uh, we are so grateful for your support 
and we're looking forward to see where things go this year. Well, thank you for allowing us to help you guys. It's an honor. Thank you.